Okay, everybody, we are back with another question from Kathy uh, here on the channel. Thank you, Kathy, for this question. This is on a video that I did with Little Mocha, part one of a masterclass for easy groundwork. And Mocha is a little firecracker sometimes. She's a lot of fun, uh, but it was very important to get on with her groundwork. And uh, so this was her first day of doing that. So while she's bouncing around in the background doing some stuff, uh, let's talk about Kathy's question. So she says, great that you're telling everybody not to stare at the horse's eyes. Some advice to look at the feet so as not to make things personal. It's so hard to avoid looking directly at the face. Is there any merit to standing still and not moving your feet? And one more question. I know you are just trying to get the go right, but eventually would you send her around several times in order to make sure she bends and keeps her shoulders and hindquarters safely away from you? These are all really good questions. It's very, very common in the horse world to consider what the hind quarters are doing and to talk about them a lot and have them yield. I've changed my mindset over time on how I think about this business of hind quarters and yielding and disengaging and stuff like that. But let's cover this in order. So the first thing is great that you're telling everybody not to stare at a horse's eyes. Now I did cover this with Kathy in the comments uh, and she understood and agreed, but I stare at my horse's eyes all the time. I stare at new horse's eyes all the time. I stare at any horse's eyes all the time. Horses are generally staring at our eyes a lot. And if it was in their mindset that them staring at our eyes is an aggressive tactic, then Mocha is the most aggressive horse that you could think of right now because she does a lot of staring at me. Um, in times of real, real worry, there is a disengagement of our attention that can have some merit. But ideally, we want to be able to communicate a lot with our eyes. I think the thing that has caused this to be so prevalent, you know, don't, don't look at them in the eyes, don't look at them in the eyes, is because humans freak out when they're scared and don't recognize it. And a lot of the times they will just simply stare straight at the horse without blinking. It's freaky, right? Just me doing that. So me doing that, you would feel uncomfortable compared to me normally blinking or moving my hands or moving my head around or just doing anything, shrugging my shoulders. All of these things indicate relaxation and comfort and uh, confidence rather than straight staring. Because a lot of times when we're working with horses, we will end up sort of freezing and staring. And that's disconcerting. That's, that's weird. So uh, I actually do recommend to a lot of people to just stare at their horse. No problem at all. But remember to breathe. Remember to blink. Remember to move. Remember to shrug your shoulders. Remember to move your head. I don't care what. But don't stand there like a statue. Like you're, you're going you're gonna to freak anybody out, let alone a horse. <laughs> so some people advise to look at the feet to not make things personal. I want things to be as personal as possible with my horses. I don't recommend anybody stare at a horse's feet ever. Uh, look at their eyes, you look at their ears, look at their face, because you're going to be able to see exactly what they want and what they're thinking, what they're doing by doing so. It would be really, really weird, I think, to a horse if what you did was stare at their feet. I think they would think, are you about to chew on my feet? What do you want with my feet? Why are you looking at my feet? So I think that that advice is no good. Uh, and I would say don't do that. It's hard to avoid looking directly at the face. Yeah, keep doing it. Uh, it's hard because it's natural. When we want to know what something or somebody is doing, you're going to look at their face. You're going to look at their eyes. You're going to look at their, in this case, ears, mouth, whatever. If you're having a hard time understanding what somebody's saying, you're going to look at their mouth. You're going to try to read their lips a little bit. Don't worry about any of that. Totally do it. So next question is, is there any merit to standing still and not moving your feet? In groundwork, so let's fast forward a little bit, get something done. I think that the only merit, okay, so she's, I think she was pretty freaked out about this. This was a while ago. Yeah. Okay. So let's watch a little bit uh, with my brand new haircut. <laughs> my goodness. Um, and you can see that she's, she's moving away from the flag. She's kind of worried. I think that the only merit that there ever is to standing still and having a horse do something is when you want them to stand still. So I'm standing still. I mean, I'm ready and I need to be ready because she really loses it. And you can see I don't get stepped on. Thank goodness. And then I here I disengage, but I'm still staring at her. All of my time is still staring sort of where I'm looking or what I'm doing. I don't look at the feet or nothing. But if I want her to stand still, I'll stand still. 
If I want a horse to move, I'll move. So when it comes to doing groundwork, I never, almost never, just stand still. There's a case for, I think I might have done a part two of this, but I now I can't recall. <laughs> have to look in the videos. But there's a case for when you want a horse to go through a gate or you want them to go through a section or go into a puddle without you. There's where you might stand still and send them. And one more question. I know you're just trying to get a good go right, but eventually would you send her around several times? Uh, I now almost never send horses around me. I think once in a while, but it is, it's not a primary, it's not a secondary. It might be a tertiary thing that I might do with horses, but I don't have much use for it. Long line lunging or lunging where you're in a round pen and you're just standing there sending a horse around. Mindless, useless, detrimental to the relationship is my opinion. I want my horses to be thinking about what I'm thinking about, where I want to go, how I want to get there, the speed I want to get there. So my feet are part of my training. Otherwise, I'm just using a part of my body, a small part of my body. There are maybe some off times that I might do something like that, but it is so far and few between that I just don't think there's a lot of value to talk about it. And make sure she bends and keeps her shoulders and hindquarters safely away from you. So when people are trying to do these exercises, so Kathy's asking about an exercise that I don't do uh, and asking me if I wanna do a thing about that thing I don't do. But I understand what the exercise is. So if you're sending a horse around you, sometimes they'll just walk right into you. Uh, and that has everything to do with what I'm talking about right here. You can see in my actions, I want her to go somewhere. But a lot of times people will have their rope in hand and they'll be staring at the horse doing a flag thing. They won't be looking anywhere where they want the horse to be. So what does the horse do? And then they'll also be pulling or yanking on and stuff like that. What does the horse do? Just come straight at you. And then they just push into you. Because there's no intention in your body to leave, to go a different way. So you really have to start there. Uh, you have to give the impression that you want a horse. So you have to look there. And a lot of people do not look away from their horse when they're training. And they do too much. She says, I know you're trying to get a go right, which I think is absolutely vital. If you don't have a go, there's no purpose whatsoever to continue any further, which I talk about in this video. So having her shoulders and hindquarters safely away from you, it already happens. I don't really think about that because I'm never making the problem in the first place. If a horse does come to me and it's got these poor habits in it where it just walks over you, I will walk straight at it in with a firm feel about me. If they start walking towards me, I will walk straight at them and they'll stop. They'll stop and the whoa, what, what is happening? They'll, they'll get out of the way because when a horse comes towards a lot of people, they'll get out of the way. The human gets out of the way and the horse just says, yep, this is how I do my groundwork. I walk straight into the human. They get out of my way. And then I do my mindless circles. And I don't want that. I want us to go together. So I'm indicating where I want to go. I'm giving a little bit of drive to make that happen. And then we start to go together, but we don't go into each other. If there's any going into, I go to them. I never have this problem of hindquarters and shoulders ramming into me. It just doesn't happen anymore. I can't actually, thinking about it now, even though I've already pondered this question, thinking about it, I can't recall the last time I've had a horse put their hindquarters or shoulder into me because I'm. it's already gone. That thought process is already gone from the horse. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I'm going to link the video here, this, this one here, in case you can't find it, to this video. And you guys will see that if you want to check that out. Um, but great question. Thanks, Kathy. And I've got two more from you coming up in future videos. So uh, <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed this one and I'll see you guys in the next one.